Isuza tries to reassure Nikki, but Nikki is not convinced. And she attacks Azusa. Nikki was immersing Isuza in the bathtub. Azusa was telling Nikki that she didn't do anything, but Nikki didn't believe it and she kept dunking Isuza. The story is about a steel factory where girls are workers. But in this factory girls are not considered as workers but as slaves. Once a girl comes here, her dead body goes out. A girl comes to work here. Whose name is Isuza? Isuza is forced to work in this factory due to unemployment. A man takes Isuza to a place where other girls also work. That man is the special bodyguard of the factory owner. Isuza gets a little worried seeing the girls working so hard in the factory but he has no choice but to do it. Because she recently quit a bar job. The reason was that, a customer was sitting with a girl at the bar. Isuza also sits down to keep this customer company. A waiter comes and says something to the girl sitting next to him. The girl apologizes to her customer and goes to a room. Isuza sits with the same customer. A special customer is sitting in the room where the girl went. Who wants to forcefully sleep with that girl? The girl stops him from doing this, but the customer forcibly starts raping the girl. The customer sitting next to Isuza also starts clinging to Isuza. Isuza sees the girl being raped from the window. Then she got up from her customer and opened the door of this room. She was shocked that the rich customer was raping that girl. The girl yells at Isuza and asks for help. Isuza calls out to the manager. Then there comes the manager who rescues the girl from the man and punches the man. After that incident Isuza then tells the manager that she doesn't want to work here. The manager understands and asks Isuza if she would like to work somewhere else where only girls work. Isuza agrees to this. Then the manager tells Isuza to meet a man. Isuza meets the man and tells of her intention to work in the factory. The man says welcome to Isuza. Then the bodyguard of the factory owner takes Isuza in the car and comes to the factory which is not a factory but a hell for girls. Isuza had been working for days. It was hard work in the factory. There was intense heat from above. The reason for which was not stopping the sweat of the working girls. There were two other girls among the workers. Nana and Nikki. Who worked there with Isosa. But both used to run their rub on Isosa. Isosa was not working due to heat. But they were not allowed to take a break until the work was over. The owner of the company is a disabled man confined to a wheelchair. A doctor is also hired in the factory to treat the girls. Azusa takes off her gloves and looks at her nail polish that has come off her nails. Nana tells Isosa that she will not be able to apply nail polish again. Azusa comes in carrying a punch but collapses from exhaustion. Nikki bumps into Azusa and tells him to finish the job. Nana and Nikki continue to shake off the mantle of being seniors. Isuza is sitting in the bathtub. She is thinking about her future. Suddenly a guard comes there, Isuza is shocked to see him and sits with her back to him. And tells the guard to leave. The guard stares at Isuza. Isuza insists the guard leave. Finally the guard leaves. Then again the same hard work, sweaty girls in the factory. Asusa weighted steel strips were placed in one place. Due to the heat, her body stamina decreases, causing her to sit on her knees. The guard comes and tells him to finish the job quickly. Isusa tells him that we too are human beings and not machines that work continuously. The three girls get busy with work again. Isusa feels thirsty. She is about to drink a bottle of water when Nikki comes and shows her from behind. Meanwhile, the guards bring in another girl named Naomi. Naomi is an old worker. She asks Nikki about Azusa if she is new here. She then tells Azusa that if she wants to stay here, she has to strengthen herself. At night, Azusa and Naomi sleep in the same room. They both wanted to talk to each other, but were waiting for the initiative from each other, and just like that the night passed. In the morning, the same work again, the same hubris and intensity of heat. Nikki was working on her machine. 
she leaves for work. The chief guard signals to another guard and that guard removes a part of Nikki's machine. When Nikki returns, her machine won't start. She tries hard, but the machine won't start. Then the same chief guard comes to Nikki and pretends to fix the machine. He then tells Nikki that one of his parts has gone bad. I give you that part in my office. When Nikki comes to the office, the guard asks Nikki, what will you do if I give you the parts? Nikki doesn't understand this. Finally, the guard speaks openly. He tells Nikki that if you please me, I will give you the machine part, otherwise your work will remain incomplete for which you may be punished. Nikki obligingly obeys the guard and surrenders herself to the guard. The guard fulfills his lust on Nikki. Isuza is asleep when Naomi gets dressed and leaves the room. Isuza wakes up and goes after Naomi. Naomi is watering a flower plant. Isuza comes there and asks Naomi what are you doing? Naomi tells Isuza that it is not a plant but a hope. I keep my hope alive that someday I will be freed from this prison. In the morning all the girls are lined up. The guard addresses all the girls and says that one of you girls has damaged Nikki's machine. The guard accuses Isuza with his words. Nikki angrily looks at Isuza. In the washroom, Nikki tells Isuza that you ruined my machine. Because of which the guard has rapped with me all night. Isuza tries to reassure Nikki, but Nikki is not convinced. And she attacks Isuza. Nikki was immersing Isuza in the bathtub. Isuza was telling Nikki that she didn't do anything, but Nikki didn't believe it and she kept dunking Isuza. Isuza wanted to run away from Nikki but Nikki grabbed Isuza and dumped her face in water. Which causes Isuza to choke. To Isuza's screams, Naomi comes in and pushes Nikki away. Isuza chokes. Naomi tries to give Isuza oxygen with her mouth. While unconscious, Isuza has a dream in which she finds herself in a hotel where many people are eating. At a table, the same bar manager is sitting with some people, the manager is surprised to see Isuza. Isuza starts crying on seeing the manager and then Isuza wakes up with a shock. Then she hides her face in her knees on the bed and cries. Hearing Isuza crying, the doctor comes to her and congratulates her for surviving. After a while, the guard comes to pick up Isuza. Isuza goes back to work with the guard. There Isuza first thanks Naomi for saving her life. Nana and Nikki are watching Isuza. Isuza gets down to work. When she passes by Nikki, Nikki threatens her again. After some time, the doctor also comes there. Isuza falls while working. The guard tries to force Isuza up, but the doctor intervenes and stops the guard. He then takes Isuza to the clinic where he checks up on Isuza. Doctor said to Isuza, forbids heavy lifting. Isuza thanks the doctor and starts walking away. As she leaves the clinic, two guards arrive and take Isuza to a room where Nikki was already there and the guards are raping Nikki. Then the four guards gang up on Nikki and Isuza. They lay Isuza down on the couch and also mistreat her. The two girls retreat to the washroom, weeping over the injustice they have suffered. At night, Naomi sits with Isuza while Isuza sleeps. Naomi bids farewell to Isuza and departs. The next morning, an emergency siren blares and the guards hurry off. Only three girls remain on duty, and Naomi has vanished. The head guard questions the remaining girls about Naomi's whereabouts, and they themselves wonder where she could have gone. Nikki asks Isoza if Naomi said anything to her, but Isoza is unaware of her disappearance. Eventually, Isoza is apprehended and restrained. The factory owner suspects Asuza of conspiring with Naomi because they shared a room, but she denies any involvement. The bar manager arrives and reveals that he is also involved with the illicit activities. On the factory owner's orders, the guards attack Asuza and sexually assault her. Meanwhile, Isosa visits the spot where Naomi used to water a flower, weeping as she throws it away. Suddenly, she discovers something buried in the soil, beneath the plant, a few sheets of paper wrapped in plastic. She shows the papers to Nana and Nikki and reads aloud the instructions for making a gun. 
The girls realize that Naomi must have used the gun to escape, and they decide to make their own. The three gather the gun parts while hiding from the guards, knowing that this is their last chance to escape. They work on the gun secretly and skillfully, just as Naomi had done. Finally, they complete the gun and decide to leave that very night. While Isoza is working, a guard assaults her, and she sustains an injury to her leg. The two girls rush to help Isoza and take her to a doctor for. The doctor bandages Isoza's injury and steps out of the room for a moment. Nana and Nikki enter the room and propose a new plan to Isoza. However, Isoza insists on leaving immediately. Nana counts to give her a moment to gather herself, but Isoza reassures them that she will catch up with them later. The two girls depart, and Isoza conceals the gun under her leg. When the doctor returns and finishes dressing Isoza's wound, she experiences a cramp and lifts her leg, unintentionally revealing the gun. The doctor spots it and takes notice. Nikki and Nana were sneaking around, trying to avoid being caught. They made their way to the staircase, but were spotted by the guards. Nikki taunted them, and the guards were puzzled about where they got their guns from. Isuza, holding a gun, explained her escape plan to the doctor and asked for his help. However, the doctor snatched the gun away from her while they were talking. Nikki and Nana then held the guards at gunpoint and led them towards the main gate. As they opened the first gate, they encountered two guards approaching them. Isuza panicked, but Nikki confronted the guards. Suddenly, a shot was fired, and one of the guards was killed. The factory owner and his bodyguard arrived at the scene, and the doctor tried to shoot Isuza, but his gun failed. The doctor then explained to Isuza that making a gun was not enough, she also needed bullets. Isuza felt foolish for not realizing this earlier. Meanwhile, the doctor went to look for Nikki and Nana, but Isuza couldn't resist leaving as well. Nikki and Nana engaged in a scuffle with the guards, and Nikki accidentally dropped her gun, which hit the factory owner's head and caused him to bleed. The bodyguard was thrown off by the sight of blood and started shooting blindly. Isuza steps into the elevator and ascends. Her bodyguard starts shooting and kills all the guards. Unfortunately, Nana also gets shot, but Nikki manages to escape and flees with Nana. The factory owner orders the bodyguard to track them down and kill them, and he complies. However, Nana is unable to walk, so she stays put. The doctor arrives, but so does the bodyguard, who kills all three of them. Isuza is devastated by the sight of the dead bodies and proceeds to a serene place where she takes out an empty pistol from her pocket and tries to commit suicide. Suddenly, a bodyguard approaches her, seizes her hand, and places the gun on her lap. At first, Isuza is hesitant, but then she summons the courage to fight the bodyguard, causing both guns to fall. Now they don't know which gun is loaded or not. Both pick up guns and fire, leading to an unknown outcome. In the city, the factory owner runs an advertisement seeking new girls, and he is in a restaurant where he attempts to lure another girl. Suddenly, Isuza appears, armed this time, and heads directly to the owner of the factory and shoots him without hesitation. The scene ends with the factory owner collapsing and Isuza walking away. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay tuned for more insightful and entertaining videos. Our goal is to continue to bring you the ultimate fun and educational experience. Thank you for being a part of our Ultimate Fun TV community and we look forward to exploring more cinematic wonders with you soon.